Right guys, uh, let's have a look at question two then, which I've got here now. I've written it out actually, but let's go back to the paper just to have a quick look at it, which I'll just glance in on there. Here's question two, part A. It says, find all the values of theta between naught and 360, satisfying the equation below. 7 sine squared theta plus 1 equals 3 cos squared theta minus sine theta. Okay, so I've written that out, as I say, in the, on a notepad so that we can work on it. Here we are, 7 sine squared theta plus 1 equals 3 cos squared theta minus sine theta. And we're solving this between naught, uh, theta between 0 to 360 inclusive. So what we've got is we've got an equation with sine squareds, equation with cos squareds, and equation with sines. Now if we, if we remove the cos squareds by writing them as 1 minus sine squareds, we'll have an equation that's a quadratic in sine theta, basically, won't we? Because the sine is already there. So should we do that? So what we're going to have then, we're going to have 7 sine squareds uh, plus 1 equals, uh, and then 3 cos squared, we can write as 3, 1 minus sine squareds, can't we, in a bracket, 3 lots of, minus sine theta. So let's expand the bracket, 7 sine squared theta plus 1 equals, 2 lines for expanding the bracket, minus 3 sine squared theta. Uh, minus the sine theta tagged at the end there. Now I'm going to move those two, three things across. So move the 3 sine squared to be with the 7 to make 10 sine squared theta. Um, move the sine theta over, so it's plus sine theta. It's just one of those. And then you've got a 1 already there, but the 3 moves over. And 1 minus 3 is minus 2 equals 0. Okay, as we said, that's a quadratic in sine theta, isn't it? So we're going to try and hope we can factorize this. Now, two, the 2 there, straight away, you know your last term is two ones, the plus and the minus. So there's not a lot of options there. So that's why I put them in to start with, is because the 10 is more variable. Because the 10 will either be 10 lots of 1, but if I think about 10 and 1, you see, like so, then it's far too big to combine with the 1 and 2 to make a difference of 1. Because the difference is far too big. So straight away it makes me think of 5 and 2 rather than 10 and 1. So it'll be 5 and 2 or 2 and 5, you see. Now that's nice because 2 2's are 4 and 5 1's are 5 and the difference is 1. So I've got a feeling that the 2 would need to be here to go with the 2 on the other side. Yeah? And the 5 would need to be here to go with the 1 to make 5 sine theta. That one's a plus, so this needs to be a plus. This one is a minus. That's the try. Let's check then. We draw four lines to expand the bracket. Two lines for the first one, yeah? And two lines for the second. So let's verify we've got it correct. First line is 2 times 5 is 10. Sine times sine is sine squared. 10 sine squared. The second line is minus 4 sine theta. And then plus 5 sine theta. That's line 2 and line 3. And that will give us a plus sine theta, won't it? Because 2 twos are minus 4. Plus 5 is 5 take 4 is 1, and they're sine theta, so it's 1 sine theta. The last line, line 4, uh, is 1 times minus 2 is minus 2. So I think we're okay. So let me just scratch out all this work that I've done here in my head, really, because there's the factorization, yeah? Okay. So what does that tell us then? Well, that tells us that either this equal the product is naught, so either this thing here equals naught, or that thing there equals naught. So we can write 2 sine theta plus 1 equals naught, and that implies that sine theta, move the 1 across, and then once that's moved across, move the 2 down, and you get that. Uh, or we can have the other value, 5 sine theta minus 2. When that equals naught, the product is naught. So when does that happen? Well, again, move the 2 across. That comes a plus 2, and then move the 5 from time to divide. So there's our answers. This is minus 0 0.5, if you want to write it as a decimal. And this is equal to 0 0.4. So we better solve this then. It's a sign we're solving between 0 theta and 360. So we need to draw circles. So let me draw a couple of circles then. I'll draw them here on the right-hand side. So they got room over on the left to do some more work. So what about the first one then? Sine theta is negative. Here's my CAST, cast I say. So tell me when the trigs are positive. On the first one, sine is negative. Sine is positive here and here. 
yeah so it's negative here and here so I draw two lines I mark off theta uh, alpha the associated acute angle and I write sine alpha and I drop any negative if there is one then do shift sine on the calculator uh, so sine to the minus one of 0 0.5 and that tells me what alpha is doesn't it so alpha so let's get our calculator make sure you're in we're in radiance mode which we're not in in this one so I better go over to mode uh, we no, we're doing degrees aren't we so we're okay mode is degrees so that's number three okay let's can't clear the screen and then we'll do shift sign shift uh, sign and we want 0 0.5 don't we to get the associated acute angle alpha 30 degrees as we would have known so let's put it in the diagram now so that's 30 there and this is th if I can write it in it's 30 degrees there so in my little picture the first solution I go around 90 180 and 30 more so theta will be 210 that's the first answer and then the next answer would be go around 90 180 270 around 360 and back 30 so that tells me that theta is 330 degrees 360 less 30 so there's the two answers for that one sorry it's all squidged up but I wanted to try and get it on one small page so there's the two answers I'm sure you'd use a bit more space in an exam book okay so the next one I'll draw a circle down here uh, no, 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 I'll put it on the other side because it looks like uh, this is the whole part of the question, isn't it? So let's draw another circle here with a bit more room. And we'll try and do it, do it in a more of a civilized way, I think, with this one. So draw a circle then. Right, cast. And the second little trig equation is sine theta is 0 0.4. Sine is positive here and here. 0 0.4 is positive. Draw two lines in these quadrants. Mark off alpha the associated acute angle to the horizontal and write sine alpha it's the same every time and you drop the sign if there is a sign to drop there isn't one so we just write 0 0.4 then do shift sign both sides arc sign shift sign 0 0.4 go to our calculator do shift uh, sign uh, 0 0.4 close bracket equals 23.57 okay so we'll do it to 2dp uh, it will, so the 7 will round up because the next one's an 8 so it'll be 23.58 so put that in the diagram then 23.58 here and 23.58 here so we can go around and measure off theta so the first we go around to here so that tells us then I'm running out of space, so I'll put theta down here. Is 23.58 is the first measure, and then the next one is round 90, round 180, and back round 180, back 23.58, isn't it? So theta equals uh, 150. Oh, let's do it in the calculator. What? So so we're all happy with it. 180 minus 23.58. Uh, get the decimal 156.42 156.42 degrees so there's our answer also so again I want to apologize about the space but I wanted to put it on the one page just to show you so our answers then are 23.58 156.42 210 and 330 okay then all problems like this are all the same, and uh, solving these little trig equations are virtually the same every time. Okay, that's 2 part A done then. So now in the next little clip, we'll move on to 2 part B. Good.